She started having problems with the fistula in November of 2015. And she was leaking from the side of her fistula. And uh, she saw several doctors in El Paso who literally didn't want to touch her or do anything. They didn't physically touch or examine her. My nephew, who's a trauma surgeon in El Paso, said, Uncle, you want to go to Omaha, Nebraska? Transported here to the hospital. Mind you, it's about 10, 11 o'clock at night. Never been to Omaha in my life. But I'm a retired soldier, and I figured I can conquer this. I mean, I, I can win the battle, so I can do this. So we got here, and I mean, a team, a team of individuals just literally attacked my wife. Just boom, 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 this, this, this. She was very sick when she arrived. You know, she was on a breathing machine, and her abdomen was open. And she had been in the intensive care unit for all the time leading up to, to when she got here. Anna wasn't even aware that she was in Nebraska, I don't think, for the first, probably the first three or four weeks. And really, in those earliest operations, what we were trying to do was the, the bowels were so swollen, they were mostly on the outside of the body. And it took us probably six or seven or eight operations just to slowly get the front of the abdomen closed again on top of the bowel, just so that it wasn't on the outside. Then we could start to talk about how we were going to deal with the areas that were leaking. Suddenly, I woke up and I was here. I thought I was going to have a transplant. Dr. Mercer is he's number one. He said, no. He goes, we're gonna try with the intestine. We'll just cut part of our intestine. And that's what he did. I must say, I did that and I came out and I talked with Richard and I think we were both very, um, we both appreciated the gravity of the situation. We realized how serious it was because I told him, I said, Richard, I've removed the diseased bowel, but I don't know if Anna has enough bowel left to be able to manage on her own. It may be that she has to be on permanent intravenous feeding after this. But I think she's been through so many operations, we're at a point where we have to be able to get out of the operating room and we have to just be able to get past this so she can start to work towards getting stronger overall. I could see, based on how that operation went, I could see the path forward. And then we came back and we sort of got into the, you know, the final operation. And I think, you know, if, if uh, Anna and Richard were the two most nervous people in the world, I was probably the third by, by not too much. And we did that operation and then we just, you know, it just, it felt right. And when I came out and spoke with him, I said, I, I think we have this, I, I think we're done. But she does potato, like remember Hillary talked about She healed potatoes. up beautifully and, and she was able to maintain her nutrition. She could maintain her weight, she looked great. And we said, well, let's cut back some of the intravenuses. We did, she did great. Let's cut them back again. Kept doing it, kept doing it until eventually the dietitians called me one day and said, you know, we just took her off of intravenous feeding. You know, she's completely off. We knew at every step of the way that we had the right gastroenterologists, we had the right nurses on the floor, the right wound care nurses, the best home care, the best nutritional support. We knew all of those pieces of the puzzle would work together. And that if anyone was going to be able to do this, I think we all felt pretty confident that we would be the, we would be the ones to do it. Right now I feel wonderful. I, I just feel like a new person. I appreciate life now. I see people and I'm like, enjoy your food, what you drink. I just want to thank everybody. The whole staff, everybody, the nurses, Dr. Mercer, all the doctors, they saved my life. It did teach us that there is hope out there. Never, never settle for one, one person's opinion. Seek a second opinion, a third opinion, because there's always somebody out there who will help you and guide you. And their motto here, serious medicine, extraordinary care, they live to that mission statement of that motto in my book. And I would not take my wife anywhere else in this country but here, to Omaha, Nebraska. We need more hospitals like this out there in the U.S., we do. This is one of the best, this is one of the best.